Let's talk about the top 10 reasons why a therapist might want to be in hospice and enjoy the practice. Well, I've had clinical experience both in home health, before that multiple other settings, but more recently home health, one of my least favorite things was an oasis. If you're a hospice therapist, you never have to do an oasis. If you're a hospice therapist, you never have to do a case admission. You'll do physical therapy evaluations, but no case admissions. Although, actually, on several occasions, I've been asked to go out as the first provider because they came to hospice because they were having mobility problems. They didn't care about their bowels or their pain. They wanted mobility, so I would actually see somebody on day one, but I don't have to do the whole admission paperwork. No discharge summaries in many cases. I may follow somebody until they die, and the nurse makes that last visit, and they do the discharge. It's wonderful to have that hospice benefit um, review at the local team level for the fiscal and the patient management. Your team members who you develop rapport and trust with, you together with your uh, agency managers will decide what services are provided. So we have that opportunity to uh, have input and, and make sure the right care is provided. Unique problem solving opportunities. I've seen remarkable things in as I talk about these patients, you think about people declining with cancer or any of these multiple diseases, but I also see acute fractures. I've had people with acute fractured uh, uh, humerus. I've seen people with bilateral uh, arm fractures. I've pe people with unhealed hip fractures. There's remarkable things that come along in this process, and sometimes the therapist is the person, the nurse doesn't know what to do, what to look at, how to tell them to move, splinting, positioning, having to work those things out. We see amazing things as we reach into our bag, therapy bag of trips and beyond, trying to figure out what to do. We have autonomy of practice. Um, most of the time, the physician is signing our order, but we're writing the frequency and we're writing uh, the treatment and impl implementation for what we want to do. It's extremely satisfying providing this valuable care within the team and to the people in their homes. Um, the IDT team can be very supportive. Earlier, I mentioned equipment options. It's nice to be, have the more of that flexibility. And perhaps even having an interest in end-of-life care. As we mature in our lives and in our clinical practice, we see where all this goes. And uh, there are many questions about that. And as we go, if you follow through with the next several uh, courses in this series, we'll talk more about that.